Um, I think the influx of hard drugs in our community has just told, totally made everybody go sideways. But hasn't that been here for a while? Uh, but it's more prevalent now. Like in what way? <laughs> that is everywhere. It used to be we smoked our weed and drank our beer. I mean, we got people falling out on heroin and everything. It's, yeah, it's crazy. People, we used to all be a family here. And now everybody is, there's a, they got divided, you know, because once somebody does somebody wrong, obviously, you know, there's people that support them, people that don't. And then people that were friends, they're conflicted. And it's all because they're, they're I don't know, moral decay, I guess. That's a real shithole. There's nothing like Portland here. But we have, like, for example, I came back from Nebraska, like I said, right? This is my, I'm always, this is my stomping grounds up here. And I visit downtown now and then. I come walking through, come back, a goddamn needle exchange in the back corner here. Like, what the fuck is that? Why a story has got a fucking needle exchange in the back of the grocery parking lot? I don't know about that. All I know is there's a table there. And somebody I used to work with at the processing plant, I seen him, I hadn't seen him in like a couple of years, and the closer I got, I was like looking at a fucking zombie, man. I was like, what happened to you? I didn't ask him that, but that was going in my head. You know, it's just, that's what's doing it, man. And it's, it's an epidemic, and those pharmaceuticals, man, are just pimping that shit. A big racket. Well, actually, no, it's not. It's, it's that corporate conglomerate. But I'll tell you what, I used to do... Uh, uh, worked for a doctor back in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I just, he was a dermatologist. I said, you have to tell me, doc, I know these pharmaceuticals wine and dine you, this, that, and the other. And he said, that's true, we do get incentives or vacations or, you know, nice restaurants while they sell the pitch. And I'm like, yeah, it's all just greed and money, man. And that's what's fucking this world up. It's the almighty dollar. And that shit doesn't mean anything. I mean, you have to have money to get by, but when it's just your, your religion, that's where it gets corrupted. Well, yeah, well, and then you got Bear buying out Monsanto's. I mean, come on. They're already poisoning our drinking water with fluoride that lowers IQ at a young age, 10 to 15 percent, you know. I mean, every which way, the, in the vaccines that they're pushing, uh, uh, resting people. Hell, man, this country is so fucked up, the land of the free, people are getting jailed for collecting rainwater. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now it's almost like a social standard. I mean, it's like a, a class of itself, and it's just, I don't get it. It used to... When I used to do hard drugs, I would I would at least keep it hidden. I didn't. I don't know. Now it's well, mainstream. You mean, yeah, it used to be taboo. It, it, you should be ashamed of it, you know. Mm. Now it's like fuck it. I'm a tweet or whatever. It's like Jesus. Well, what man. do you think of the social benefits of that? If it's no longer being hidden, what do you think? I don't know. I think you should carry yourself with a little more respect. Uh -huh. You know, I think you should have respect for yourself first and foremost. That's the problem. Nobody has respect for themselves anymore. Well, what do you think? Led that oh, fucking the goddamn hippies in the 60s, first of all, but then the, just the, the, the state, because they wanted, just like Henry Kissinger said, we get the women in the workforce, because then we get double taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And then we, we, we become the children's parents, and then you indoctrinate them how you see fit. You know, it's all written in the white papers. Fuck no, man. I'm my child's parents. The community is not raised, or my kids are not raised by the village. It's raised by the parents. Uh -huh. That's yeah. I'm a firm believer of that that's where it all. In our our school uh, education, public schooling is terrible. I think every country should do that. It's we aren't uh, we aren't the world's band aid. We aren't the world's police. Uh, we are, but we don't need it. Where did that come from? I mean, it came from post World War II. So well, yeah. Well, like Eisenhower said, the most dangerous thing to worry about is the militarized industrial complex. Yeah, come on now. Of course, it was in the fifties. Um, well, here the only thing worth a damn is uh, Cory Buck, and she started the the filling empty bellies down there at the park, and that woman's a saint. And other than that, um, I know the warming shelter offers a couple showers or whatnot, um, and, and then. Uh, a few other places you can get uh, clothes, maybe. But what people need, they need more than that. They need uh, maybe how to. They need how to live life, <laughs> you know. Because so many people get so far down the hill and just despair. You know, that's why we pick up the bottle or you know do what we do, and then it's just a, a hole you can never dig yourself out of. And I think, I think, I what I think is that people need to have a feeling of worth. Because once you get that little bit of pride in you that you had a job well done, you want to build upon that. And and we're put down so much and looked down 
that it's like, fuck it, why try? And I see that all the time with my hum bum friends down there, you know? Yeah. But sometimes you go too far and they don't make it back. And I think there should be more than just throw your ass in detox for seven days so you dry out. I mean, I, I don't know. I just think... I because I had a really good life, you know. I have a bachelor's in journalism from the University of Missouri. I, I alcohol fucked my world all over, you know. I had the nice condo, drove the BMW, all that shit, and uh, it all went to hell like that. It was a quick landslide. So I, I'm not having a pity party, but I know that it can happen to anyone. I have friends that attorneys that went from million dollar attorneys to heroin addicts. I had an optometrist friend, lost his practice, lost his wife, it died, drank himself to death at 53, you know? It could be anybody. Addiction does not fucking see classes. It sees vulnerability. And vulnerability runs in, in all societies, every neighborhood. And I don't know if what I'm saying will fit the narrative of what you're trying to put in your documentaries, but if you want a true on-the-streets report of what it's like, I'm just telling you, word for word, that's, that's what it is. Um, I don't, I think maybe political correctness, I believe that is a big part, um, parenting as a whole, I mean, I, I thought I was a little hellion when I was growing up, and it's, I had nothing on these kids, I just see, you know, I, they're replacing family values with, like, MTV, um, they're on their computer and things all the time, and I think, a lot of what you're, you read, you get a lot of fake news, and, and they channel what they want you to think. I don't know. I'm not a tinfoil hat wearer, but I, I see what I see. Yeah. Well, and then the cocaine, and I got a felony. And with that felony, I can't do shit. I can't get real work. I can't get housing. I, I, can't, I can't write. I mean, it totally fucked off my career, you know, for a reference-wise. Yeah, but you're totally articulate, so it seems like you could write to do journalism. Yeah, yeah I, I still do journals. I am publishing a book one day. Oh, of course. Well, I already know what it is. I know what it is. And um, I just, I had some hurdles I had to jump. Because I, 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 I'm pretty good at sabotaging my own cause. Mm -hmm. You know? And those were issues I had to deal with. And I, um, this last couple months, uh, my girlfriend of a long time, like years, she got hemmed up on a, a 12-year-old misdemeanor warrant. And so she's been, she gets out on the 21st. And, and, uh, so she's been in for like 50 some days now. And that, that's, yeah. That, yeah, put a lot of things in perspective. Gave me time to think. Uh, but yeah, it's just, yeah, it's sometimes, um, well, when I found out, <laughs> you can't lie to yourself. I was sugarcoating shit to myself, you know? How does somebody talk to a counselor if they can't even be honest with themselves? That's first and foremost. I always laughed about when you go to AA, and the first step is you admit that you are powerless over alcohol. And I'm like, that, right here, here I am. But when it came to be honest with myself on all the issues surrounding that, I lied to myself left and right, or deny it, or had the ostrich syndrome. You know, if you can't see it, it's not there. Yeah, I think so. it's a, yeah, it's a but yeah, because it, uh, the unknown can be scary. And then I just realized, uh, well, I've always sort of took the bull by the horns, but there's some of those, uh, and I had a major, I hadn't spoke to my mom in over 12 years, right? I actually called her up about a month ago, and that, right there, and that released a lot for me, because there's a lot of shit going around, oh, excuse me, hello folks, there's a lot, morning, there's a lot of things that, because she, she took off when I was a youngster, and then I got a job at eight, but so I got all that, and I held a lot of resentment because she had my sister later and she was the best mom because she was off the cocaine and alcohol that stopped being a whore, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then she was the, the suburbia mom, housewife. And I think I held a lot of resentment on there and I think that, I don't know, I was a, the, some being so hateful or whatnot towards that that, I don't And then that was just one example of many facets of what was going on that I had to sort out. And it's not all still sorted out, but I'm a lot farther than I was even a year ago. On, on my ideology, you know, mm -hmm. as hard as it that's exactly be. that's exactly what uh, yeah you said it more articulate than how I can put it, but that's right to the core. Yeah. Yep. And until you can do that, nothing changes. Exactly. That's right. Hit the nail on the head. Yeah. It's just too painful to do a lot of times. It's, yeah. I mean, because we don't want to think of ourselves as as failures or let down, but then 
again, if you want to get yourself up and out, you've got to clean out that closet. You got to, you know, you, and you can't be dusting underneath the rug. You got to dust it out the door. You know what I mean? You can't hide it. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, Did that's. I finally came to terms. That's what it was. I was lying to myself. And how can I fix anything if I don't know the truth? That because even though you know it is, you still got to contemplate and think about it, and, and actually put it into perspective on. Okay, I mean, not that I have. That, Everybody has something. I might have a few more than a few others, but that's it. And it was like a weight off my shoulders. I mean, I, I actually had tears on my cheeks. I think it was a relief. Mm -hmm. It was like an epiphany. You know, and that's when I called my mom about a week later after all that. Oh, you know? well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, because, yeah, it does. I mean, you're, you're free. Because everything's out there, you know? So what, as long as I continue to try to be on the best moral compass north that I can be, it's like wiping the slate, you know? It's, it's almost like when you repent. Mm -hmm. But once you own that, then you really are challenged. Mm -hmm. But then I think you could also make a big leap in progress because then you, you, you have a clear mind, mindset, I think. You don't have that the cobwebs that is limiting the, the friction of your your thought and your emotions forward. So I think it's a brand new. It's like I always say, it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah, empathy is very important. That's the only that should be a, a normal human uh, behavior. But the, the people have been jaded. I think people do this socialize or this yeah socialize because we communicate through electronics now. We don't have that face to face. You know, conversation. I mean, I've known my own ex, uh, my daughter's mom. She would text somebody that was in the house, in the other room, like literally across the hall. What? I mean, that I, you, we're becoming robots ourselves in that aspect. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you don't put in the effort to go and find that partner to share that experience. Yeah. With, experience of life. Yeah, you're using that as a form of masturbation. It's, exactly. You, you have to find a platform. Yeah. Yeah. You get the word out. I know, but what I'm saying, you, I've seen whole families walking down here, you know, and they're all like this the whole way. Why do you fuck look at the, go down the river walk and see all this beautiful scenery when all you're doing is this? And I think, yeah, I think Elon Musk has something. Hello. Hi there. Has something when, about the, I, I'm afraid of the AI technology coming anyway. I don't believe in autonomous cars. That's a good way to control you. Maybe some of that Agenda 30, huh? Uh, smart cities? Oh, yeah. You know, you know about that, I'm uh, sure. Yeah, what is it? Well, it was a, from the 60s UN plan, and uh, was, uh, they're trying to concentrate everybody to the cities. That's why they're making like these coffin-sized apartments and whatnot, really, and they're getting higher, and then they taking all the farmland. There's hardly any real private American farmers anymore. They're mostly corporations or something like that out of the government now. and. He, he who controls the food, I guess, controls the masses, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just, it, you know, about, you don't know Agenda 21, then no. move to Agenda 30, you need to check that out.